Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I know I had a brother in Christ, uh, brother and sister in Christ, that were looking at getting me a new shirt. I found this, <laughs> this new sweater. I found it in my truck. Uh, evidently, I bought a couple pairs. Sometimes, I, I know I like to do this. I like to buy two pairs to have a backup. And my old black sweater that just said King Authorized 1611 King James Bible, um, it was fading pretty bad, and I'm just sitting there trying to live with it for a while. And I'm saved, like I said, I'm trying to get the wood stove. If you've been following this ministry, I'm trying to get the wood, wood stove put in. And, like I said, I've, God blessed me. I found this in uh, the back of my truck. Um, so when I was doing a little cleaning on the truck. So God's got blessings. It's just I've, I pray that God is blessing you every day too and showing you all the smallest blessings ever. This is a small blessing. I didn't need it. The other jack, uh, sweater works just fine. It was just fading a lot. But that brother says in Christ that still plans on, was thinking about sending me one. It's up to you, okay, what God puts on your heart. But for this study, it's not really going to be a big study. It's just a quick video to remind you, brother says in Christ, of something I think the brethren are starting to... How do I say it? Um, they're not on fire anymore as they used to be. And they're not um, energetic, courageous. You know, we talk about courageous man, foolish man a lot in some of our studies. Uh, they're not being courageous. They're not on fire. They're just, they're getting burnt out. Like I said, they're not on fire. They used to be on fire. There's a lot of kindling. And then it's like the kindling's going and they're, they're starting to burn out. And one of those things is the ministry of reconciliation. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one, that one may receive the thing done in his body, according to he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Remember, we were created to please God. Okay, some people say we were created to worship God. That's true. We were created to till the ground. That's true. We were created to be in the ministry of reconciliation. That's true. But when you try to sum everything up, it comes back to that verse that says that, Talk about Jesus Christ, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We were created to please God. And what I'm talking about today is one of the things that pleases God as a Christian, brother says Christ, is the ministry of reconciliation. And you're doing things to please God to earn rewards in heaven. My biggest prayer to the Lord when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ is I don't know how eternity is going to be. I don't understand it fully and completely. God can give us little glimpses of what eternity is going to be about through His perfect written word, King James Bible for English speaking people. But there's times I prayed and I said, I just want to earn enough rewards, not because I want to be rich, but I want to be able to go and serve Jesus Christ anywhere He goes. Because one of those rewards is um, the inheritance. Be able to come back with Him and rule and reign for a thousand years. I believe there's some brethren that are going to be left behind in heaven because they didn't suffer for Jesus Christ down here. Some people, I mean, I can't see how you can't suffer, but for them to say there's an inheritance and then there's rewards, I heard a great study by Peter Ruckman. I uh, did this banner. I got some of his uh, Bible study videos, his preaching. He talked about how there are two different things that you earn. You can earn uh, an inheritance and you can earn rewards in heaven. But regardless, I just want to be able to go and serve God anywhere. Wherever he goes, I want to be able to go. Okay? And if you don't suffer for Jesus Christ, it's a little bit of a rabbit trail, but if you don't suffer for Jesus Christ, you won't get that inheritance. If you start going the way of the world and start becoming worldly, and you start putting the world first, you start putting your flesh, the lust of the flesh first, because it's easier and it's pleasing to the flesh, it's easier just to please the flesh than to fight the flesh and put the flesh down, and you start falling into Satan's, uh, the ways of Satan, which is the king of pride, father of lies, uh, you might end up losing that inheritance. But that, getting back from the rabbit trail, back on to what I was talking about, uh, ministry of reconciliation, one of the things that pleases God, that helps you earn rewards in heaven, is the ministry of reconciliation. 
Keep reading. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance. We just did a study recently talking about the changed life. A uh, new creature in Christ Jesus, a new life, a new birth. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have come new. And they talk about how people, um, they can do some good works. And we talk about how they're reprobate. Ultimately, where's their heart at? Right here, we just read, glory in appearance and not in heart. We're to look at the heart. We're going to use this book right here, this Bible, this Word of God is like a double-edged sword, piercing asunder and dividing asunder and pierces the heart and knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. I'm trying to remember, I know I kind of didn't do the verse properly, but the thoughts and intents of the heart. We use this book to look at the heart, not the outward appearance. But I, but I don't want to go back to a, t a study we've already d did a study on. But glory in appearance and not in heart. You have a lot of people that have glory in appearance. Look at me, look at me. And their works are either reprobate. They could be good works, but they're either reprobate. Or they're worldly. They're not based off scripture. Mm -hmm. 13. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. And whether we be sober, it is for, this, it is for your cause. The Bible says be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary the devil go around like a roaring lion, just seeking whom he may devour. And we see Christians dropping left and right in these last days. Trying to justify the world and go the way of the world, and it's messing men up in ministry. Instead of saying, I want zero, th I don't want to do things God the world's way whatsoever, I want to do things God's way. This is my inheritance. No, no, i, I, I got to go with the world. Anyway. Verse 14, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. The dead old man is dead and buried. That's the whole point of water baptism as an ordinance, as an outward showing. You're showing that the old man gets dead and buried, and now you're a new creature. And people who deny the changed life are denying the power of the gospel. They're denying the power of God in their life, because they don't have it in their life. This is what I'm seeing most of the time. They don't have it in their life. And it's jealousy. They're jealous that we have it because we got truly saved, brothers and sisters of Christ. The power of God is in my life. You look at the man I was before and the man I am today, it's not the same man. Not even close. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. And that he died for all, and that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet no, now henceforth know he, we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You know another thing that pleases God? Sanctification. See, there's a lot of things that please God in here. and Some people will try to grab and isolate one and say, this is the number one reason. There's a lot of reasons why we were created. And the number one reason, when you try to sum it up to a number one reason, it's to please God. And you know one of the things that pleases God? Sanctification. The changed life. Why people don't want to please God, they don't want the changed life, they're not truly saved and born again. They're still holding on to the world. They haven't let go. When you come to God broken as a repentant sinner, you let go of this world. You stop holding uh, um, David, I guess I remember, King David in the Psalms said, If I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. you got to stop holding on to iniquity and throw it at the foot of the cross. Okay. But there's people that hold on to this and they can't stand that power, uh, the power of the gospel. That There's men out there and brothers and sisters in Christ out there that have it and they don't have it. So what do they do? They attack. Instead of getting truly saved and born again, they attack people that have the changed life. Oh, well, there doesn't have to be a change. But one of the things we're reading here that pleases God is the changed life. Sanctification. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. You want to know what else pleases God? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to him by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
I'll read that again. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I've come across professing Christians. Not possessing, professing. Okay. Professing Christians. People who claim to be part of the church of God. Saints. Born, uh, uh, bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. And they say, we don't, we don't witness, that's not what we're called to do. We're not, we don't witness. You know, one of the biggest obvious signs of someone who's a fake and a fraud, a false convert, what did we just read there? It says, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled himself to Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. If you come across someone who hates preaching the gospel, doesn't want to preach the gospel, doesn't want to give his testimony, you're dealing with a false convert. Guaranteed. Every time. Okay? So there's might be brethren out there that lack, lack courage to preach the gospel. Okay? To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. When Jesus was in the likeness of sinful flesh, he was trying to reconcile the Jewish people to God. Okay? Not imputing their trespass unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now God is in the world through us. Remember the two things you hide in your heart that's perfect. Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, is supposed to shine in you. And he only shines if there's a changed life. He doesn't shine if there's no changed life. Uh, you should hide his word in your heart. His word is perfect. You hide it in your heart and you do your best to live it. Change life. No matter how you look at it, it's always going to be a change in your life. You're not going to be the same person. Okay? And he's trying to reconcile the world to himself through us, brothers and sisters of Christ. Through us. We've got to be out there gospel tracting. We've got to be witnessing when doors open. We've got to have the courage. Pray for the, to the Lord for courage. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ with strengtheneth me. If you like courage when it comes to witnessing, not that you don't have a desire to witness, because like I said, that's a sign of a false convert. You have a desire to witness, but you kind of lack courage. That was me when I first got saved. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We represent Jesus Christ. Remember one of the parts of the armor is, is the chest plate of righteousness. Most armor, when you put on the chest piece, the top part, you have ranks right here in the mil when I was in the Air Force, the rank is right here, and it said who you what branch of the military you represent, and it has your name. I was bought with a price. I represent Jesus Christ. And then over here for Frank, God might call you to be a, an elder, a bishop, a deacon, but the number one rank for a Christian is servant. I'm a servant for Jesus Christ. I'm a servant to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? We represent Jesus Christ with the life that we live, but we're also supposed to, like I said, with the words, you preach the testimony, the gospel, the ministry of reconciliation is done verbally, and it's done with the life you're living. Okay. So, I wanted to get in there and talk about this because I got some testimonies. And I wanted to just do a video real quick, to, it's supposed to be quick, but to encourage you, brothers and sisters Christ, to get back out there. There's some brethren that are kind of getting burnt out, okay, uh, on gospel tracting and street witnessing, if they were street witnessing before, and there's some ministries that kind of downplay getting out there and preaching. They'll say it every once in a while, yeah, you could go out there and leave gospel tracts, but... At this point, what's the point? Nobody wants the gospel, and, and doors are closed for the most part. And, and they always take, they always, they always, I'm not saying that's not true, but they're always looking at the negative side. The Bible doesn't say, and, unless you don't believe the doors are opening, or you, you, unless you believe like people don't want it, then, then you don't have to give it to them. It says to preach the gospel, period. We're ministries of reconciliation, period. Okay? So, I had a brother in Christ that was up in Canada, his, uh, him and his wife, brother and sister in Christ, with two sons, and he helped me make these gospel tracts. And I can't get too close, but um, uh, the front page says, the front, it's the it's thing that folds open, and it opens, and it's, it's just three pages on the front, three pages on the back. Three pages on the front has three pictures, and then the words in the back are all Bible scriptures talking about repentance, 
Okay, talking about what Jesus Christ did for us, for you, whoever reads this, as a sinner, the consequences of that sin, okay, uh, calling upon the name of the Lord, the changed life after salvation, that God can give you a new life in exchange for that old, dirty, rotten, filthy one that you have. And the way I like this set up is I lay it down because the first thing that sticks up is hell. Time is running out, are you ready? For the wages of sin is death. And I put down their hell. And I put down at the bottom. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. And then when you open it up, you see heaven. There's the hope. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is the hope. So we have problems nowadays trying to find good gospel tracts. But you can get with a brother or make your own gospel tract. As long as it lines up with scripture. Repentance. You need to have repentance in there. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Repentance has to do with having sorrow for your sin, what sin is, the consequences of sin, and then what Jesus Christ did to take those sins away. Okay, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you and then change life afterwards. God can give you a new life. Do you want a new life? Or are you going to stick with the old one? Okay. I've been giving out these primarily, and I'm almost out. That brother in Christ gave me two huge boxes, and I'm almost out. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to... I, I got out of the first big box, and I got down the second box, but now I'm down to ones that need to be folded, so i got to hand-fold them, and I'm, I'm getting low on the ones that were already folded. So I do still have half of the second box, because I want to make sure I'm being honest. Okay. Um, I've given these out. A brother in Christ made this. So it's how to be saved and know it. And I heard he's supposed to be updating it, so I hope he doesn't mess things up, because right now he's kind of struggling with pride. Um, but uh, I have these, and I give these out to people like neighbors, people that are, I deal with every day. I try to give these to people that I see every day and I deal with every day. And then these are the ones I go into town and I leave everywhere and I've handed them out. Yesterday, I was praising the Lord. I got to hand out two gospel tracts in person. They took the gospel tracts. Most of the time, in these last days, people don't want, for the most part, they don't want them. But here's the thing, brothers and sisters Christ. We are still supposed to keep... Um, we are still supposed to be trying to offer them. Having the attitude, oh, they don't want them. How do you know until you made the offer? Can I give you this gospel tract? This is very important. It's life-saving. This will save your life. How do you know they're going to reject it until, until you offer it? But you've got people that are getting burnt out, brethren. And you've got men in ministry that are really promoting that, well, what's the point? Oh, yeah, you should. Oh, yeah, it's a good thing. But they used to be hardcore about it. Gospel tracting, street witnessing, now... Not so much. And I, we need to get back to that hardcoreness. Especially if we go through with people saying we think we're going to go through some hard times. But I gave this gospel track out to two people, praise the Lord, yesterday. And I think uh, three or four days before that, a week before that, I, and reason this is a big deal to me, I gave, sometimes for the homeless people, I'll give them $5 and I'll give them this tract. And I tell them that this tract is more important than that five dollars. This track will save your life. And I went, I pulled up, I went to the dollar store to get some rubbing alcohol to do some cleaning with it. And as I was pulling out, there was a woman and her dog sitting there with those signs that saying, you know, can't work or need money for food and whatnot. And I know a lot of people keep thinking, well, a lot of those people, they, it's, you know, they could, you can complain, brother, sister, Christ, because, but that complaining is not going to change who they are, okay? Only this can change who they are. Only the power of the gospel can change who they are. But you say, well, they're just lazy and they could work and this is just a scam. It doesn't matter. You can't change who they are. This can change who they are. Jesus can change who they are. So I pulled over, rolled up the wind, went down the window, and I gave her this gospel tract, and I gave her the five dollars. And when I do, you usually could do that to the homeless around here. They, um, they'll just say, "Oh yeah, I love this. I love this." I had one guy that I gave, I, I gave him the gospel tract. He said, "Oh, thank you." We got to talking, and he started quoting scriptures and everything. And I said, "Well, do you have a Bible?" And he's like, "No, I don't have a Bible." And I was like, 
do you want one? And he's like, oh yeah, I'll take one. I always keep a used King James Bible in my truck. That's something you, Brother Sister Christ, might want to do. Go to the secondhand stores and find some old King James Bibles that nobody wants and buy them and keep a secondhand Bible in your truck or vehicle, I have a truck, that you can hand out to somebody who wants a King James Bible. They might not be saved, but if they get that Bible and they're poor and they're sitting there with nothing to do, they, God might prick their heart to open the book and start reading it. And learning about salvation, learning about God, who He is, and why we need to be saved. Okay? Um, but I gave him the gospel tract, I gave him the Bible, I gave him five or ten bucks, I couldn't remember how much. But I was doing laundry that day, and then I made a run over to the um, farmer's market, because I, I try to go to the farmer's market twice a week to get fresh vegetables and fruit. Um, so the farmer's market, I hit the farmer's market, and on my way back, I see the guy coming, walking across the, the main road where there was a gas station, and he's got a paper bag with a bottle nose sticking out of it. He took the money that I gave him and bought alcohol with it. What he did with that Bible, I have no clue. But God will hold him accountable to it. We're not supposed to look at that and go, see, you should have never given him that gospel track, and you should have never given him that Bible. Uh, no, I should have. God will hold him accountable. He walked over to another guy that had a guitar sitting there, and they just sat there and started getting drinking. So back to the story about the woman, though. The reason I mention that is I've had bad times where I go and I just say, Oh, Lord, he had the truth. He, I, he actually had, because I gave him the Bible, he had your word, he had the truth, he had the way. And he forsook it for this world. And there's brethren that are falling away because they're forsaking this for the world. Please, brothers and sisters, God can pick you back up. Whole another thing, God can pick you back up. But when I handed that track to the woman, she's like, oh yeah. Because I just wanted to point out, just because they get excited, oh yeah, that's great, that's everything. They might be excited about the five or ten bucks or the free food you're going to give them. You still do that, brothers and sisters of Christ. Why? Because the Bible says that you don't reward evil with evil, you overcome evil with what? Good. And it's a good thing to give, uh, it's a bad thing to support a, an alcohol habit. I didn't give him the five bucks for alcohol, I gave him five bucks for food. Go get yourself some meat. I was eating next door. I said, the lady next door is really nice to the homeless people. You can go next door for five bucks. You can get a ten buck meal from her. Okay? He didn't do that. That's where I ate. Um, good uh, secondhand stores. It's, it's like a Ma and Paul restaurant. And everything's local meat. It's hamburgers as big as the plate almost. I can only eat half a hamburger. Um, but the point is, is... You don't, start, you don't give them cash knowing they're going to get alcohol. That man, I will not give that man cash again. If he wants food, I'll go personally buy food for him. If he needs clothes, I'll go down to the secondhand store with him and personally buy him some clothes. But now that I know that man has a problem, I will not, will not give that man cash again. But you don't have the attitude of, I'm not going to do anything, period, because who knows what they're going to do with it. Okay? You give them to God and you do what's right. And you overcome evil with good. I gave her this, so she was very excited. Oh yeah, thank you. I love these things. I thank you. Thank you. She took the money. I need to learn how to turn that off. It keeps going off in some of my studies. Oh, it's going to ring. might try again. <laughs> we'll wrap this up real quick. But I was talking to her and I gave her the gospel track and I left and I went to the farmer's market that day. And as I was driving back from the farmer's market, I saw her sitting in that same spot and she had this open. And she, I could see the color. I could see the print. She had it open. And she was reading. A seed was planted. Brother Jesus Christ, we're supposed to be planting seeds. We're supposed to be planting seeds. There we go. Praise the Lord. And there we go. Maybe that's how we do it. I'm trying to learn how to work technology. So you might still hear it a little bit in the background, but I'll let it keep going. Uh, you reached Philip Newton. Please leave your name and a phone number, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. It's the groomers for my dog, Victoria. Hi.
looks like her hair gets, gets moved back to tomorrow at 12. So, tomorrow at 12, I got a haircut for Victoria. But sorry for the interruption, brother and sister Christ. Things happen. Okay? Um, but she was reading this. She had it open. A seed was planted. Brother and sister Christ, that's all we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be planting seeds. You have good, those who do gospel tracting, I leave gospel tracts everywhere I go. There's sometimes I do a gospel tracting on Saturday. The reason I like doing gospel tracting on Saturday the most is because a lot of uh, places that are closed, um, the post office is closed. But I go in to check the P.O. box. And um, most of the time it's empty. Okay, I'm not famous. Okay, I know some brethren like to grab a tote and say, look at all these letters we've gotten. Look at me, look at me, look at me. But... I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not famous, and that's a, that's a good thing. I don't want to be famous in your life, brother says Christ. I want this to be famous in your life. That's right here. I want God to be famous in your life. Right. Are you waking up every morning thanking God and, and praising God and going to bed every night thanking God and praising God? That's what I want. But I always check it, and sometimes I get some, a letter from a brother in Christ, praise the Lord, or something. But most of the time it's always empty, but I love going because I gospel tracked. And the post office is closed, so I know those gospel tracts that I lay around will stay there all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and it won't be till Monday till they get around to cleaning the place that they'll start throwing the gospel tracts away. So that's a place I do some gospel tracting. Um, but like I said, if you can't, if you don't make yours, and you say, well, I don't make them, where can I get some? You have to be careful where you get your gospel tracts. I still like these. I don't know if they've ruined it or messed with it, but the story of Noah, killer storm, I'm on the ocean. So this will relate to a lot of people here on the ocean. And it talks about salvation through the story, and it uses the story of Noah, why the world had to die because of wickedness and sin, and why you've got to give your life to Christ, why Jesus Christ had to die because of wickedness and sin. And you read it, but before you buy a gospel tract, my advice for this Christ is read the gospel tract out. Read it out. And make sure it lines up with Scripture. A lot of Chick Publications gospel tracts, they don't line up with Scripture. They're easy believism, um, easy prayerism, okay, child uh, conversion, showing little kids getting saved. And it's like a little kid will say, if you raise a kid in the admonition of the Lord, they're gonna, it's going to be like, I believe they're saved. Because you raised them in the admonition of the Lord. But the truth of the matter is they are not saved according to how we are saved. They're saved because they're innocent. The Bible says, where there is no law, there is no transgression. You raise them in the admonition of the Lord, they can, they can love the Bible, they can love the Bible characters, they can say they love Jesus, and everything is a kid growing up, which is great, because that's how we're supposed to raise them. But there's going to come a time in that child's life, where when all is said and done, they still have to come to Jesus Christ when they get older. Not when they're a little child, when they get older, when all of a sudden they have to come and say, am I going to hold on to the world, or am I going to let go of the world and truly give my life to Jesus Christ at the cross? Okay, we we'll call it the age of accountability. Right? Um, they're still going to have to come. For, I know people that were raised in the admonition of the Lord when they were kids. They, oh, I love the Lord, and I can quote scripture, and I love the Lord. And when they got older, the world got a hold of them, and they turned their back on it, and they went the way of the world. I was a Christian, but now I'm an atheist. But they were raised a Christian. And they were told, I got saved at eight years old. I got saved at six years old. When the world comes a knocking, that's going to be the truth. That's when God's going to test them and say, Are you going to come to me broken and get saved? Some of them do, praise the Lord. Some don't. You have to keep praying for them. Okay? But there comes a point where they got to choose that. But when you have gospel tracts trying to deceive people into thinking that they can they can get their kids saved at six. At 8, at 10, uh, no. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. There's gospel tracts. You've got to read them. You've got to read them. And you've got to make sure they line up with Scripture. They have repentance in it. Sin. The cost of sin. Why Jesus Christ died for you. Sin. Okay? The perfect lamb. Okay? The perfect sacrifice. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, ask God to save you, and then talks a little bit about the changed life. God can give you a new life. If, you've, if, you've, if God saved you today, He's given you a new life. What I like in this, that I put in the Gospel with the Brother in Christ, how we put this together, is on the back it says, uh, 
if you got saved today, get a King James Bible today and follow along on YouTube. And I put some YouTube ministries. Sanctify through thy truth, thy word is truth. The Holy Bible, King James Version. And I know I'm probably going to upset some of the brethren, but the word Bible, it's not in Scripture. You do realize the word King James Version is not in Scripture either. I know some of Brother Christ that I love and care about, and he's in ministry he's, he, and everything. And he doesn't like the word Bible all of a sudden, because Bible's not in the Bible. It's like, but neither is King James Version. But you say that, don't you? The Bible talks about uh, words. This is another rabbit trail. It talks about words. Um, basically arguing over words. Strife, causing strife over words. Okay? Bible might not be... My, the word Bible is in my Bible. But you're talking about the Holy Scriptures. Where can the Holy Scriptures be found? And the Holy Bible, King James Version. That's where the Holy Scriptures can be found. Okay? But it needs to have that stuff in there. Uh, there's another, not just Chick Publications, there's another group that I was looking at that did uh, gospel tracts and you can donate. They're more donation based. This is more like you have to pay for them. They're not, they, they will donate sometimes overseas and stuff, but for the most part, Chick Publications, you buy gospel tracts. There's another one out there, and I can't think of the name off the top of my head, that I've gotten some gospel tracts, but I had to go through and read them and find one that was pretty good, that lined up with Scripture. Not one that I liked, because you might have certain ones you like. Like I said, Killer Storm. We're over here on the, on the ocean. And the story about Noah. I mean, this is great for this area. But there was like three or four of Chick Publications, their gospel tracts that still lined up with Scripture. Okay. So, first comes to shove. You can buy gospel tracts. They are out there. Okay. But, Brother Jesus Christ, has whole, hopefully this video has encouraged you to get back out there. If, you've been, if you're getting burnt out, you know what you got to do? you got to take some time, walk and talk with the Lord. The Bible talks about how the Bible, uh, the Word of God, the Scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God, talks about um, God renewing your spirit day by day. And when you feel really burnt out, you want to know why that is mostly? It's because you're not going back to your source of strength, your source of life, your source of energy, to get your fire, that fire going again. And that's Jesus Christ. Having a personal relationship with Him. Take some time out from gospel tracting and get in the Word. Get to singing some hymns. Okay? Get back on fire for the Lord, then get back out there. Remember, um, you have uh, Elijah, where it just seemed like he was the end of the world. God, he's in a, I think he was in a cave, where he woke up and God fed him. And then let him rest, and he fell asleep. I woke up and ate again, and he went to sleep. And I can't remember if he did it two times, three times. And there's times where we need to rest and gain our strength back and get our spirit, uh, let God renew our spirit. And then we need to get right back out there. But some people are just staying in that burnt-out state. Brother says, Christ, you need to get out of that burnt-out state, and you need to get back into preaching the Word of God as far as gospel tracting. If you were a part of a street witnessing ministry, try to put together a street witnessing ministry again. Remember the Bible says, you're supposed to, uh, before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I believe the, God, uh, the, the apostles were sent out two by two because that's the way God intends it. If you're going to do some street witnessing, you need a brother in Christ to go with you. Okay, holding a sign up there. If someone hurts you, you have a second person there to help out. If you know someone claims you did such and such, you have a second person there to say, no, he didn't. We're just sitting here harmlessly preaching the gospel. If you want, if you want it, here it is. Here's a gospel track. Here it is. If you don't want it, then don't take it. And people will try to grab from Paul. But if you read the story about Paul, when he was there, he was waiting. I think it was Athens. He was in Athens, and he was waiting for other brethren to come before he started preaching. He was waiting. And then when he came across the idol, the the statue that says to the unknown god. It just burned in his heart, and he just cleaved that he just stood up and started preaching. Is it wrong to be uh, preach the gospel one-on-one -on -one or by yourself? No, it isn't. It's not a sin. But it shouldn't be a normal thing. The normal for going out and actually street witnessing where you're holding signs, you're yelling, you're preaching, it's supposed to be two by two. Okay? There are certain situations where God will say, it doesn't matter, the second person isn't here, I need you to preach to these people. And you follow what God put on your heart, and you do it. Praise the Lord. But we need to get back to doing things God's way. But you need to get back on fire for the Lord and His Word. So, brothers, this is Christ. 
get some gospel tracks, make some gospel tracks, even if they're flimsy paper, you, even this thing here, I use really thin paper, but it can go a little bit thicker paper. It won't be as good as this. The brother of Christ that helped me with this, he had a good printer, and this is thick stock, you know, and they helped me out with this. But even if you make something that's a little flimsy, you can go ahead and make something flimsy and still lay it out places. Right? People will get it. God will get these gospel tracts to the right people that, that desperately are, you know, broken and need need something. They need a change. They need a new life. They, don't, they, they realize that they're on the way to hell and they don't want to go to hell. So, brothers and Christ, let's get out there. Let's get out there and gospel track. Like, every time you're out, try to gospel track. Get some gospel tracks. Try to lay gospel tracks everywhere every time you go to town. Uh, hand them out. Try learning to have courage to hand out gospel tracks. Believe it or not, I'm still working on it. I still try to hand it to people. Sometimes I'm like, man, I could have said this or I could have said that, Lord. Did I do a good job? I, sometimes I feel like I, even though I handed him a gospel track, I could have spoken better. God will help us. Okay, It's called learning. It's called God's building us up and giving us courage and teaching us and giving us experience so we can do better next time. And we do better the next time. We need to get back to gospel tracting in these last days, brothers and Christ. Preaching the gospel. Just because you made a video online, a gospel message online, doesn't mean that's all I have to do. I made the, If you want the gospel, go to my video message. No, if you want the gospel, I'll take time to give you the gospel. We need to get back to that. Okay? We need to get back to preaching the gospel to the lost world. Gospel tracting. Okay? More than anything, I understand we're all kind of isolated for the most part, so gospel tracting is usually our number one thing. Um, but I'd love to be part of a street witness ministry. I'd be a little scared to be out there for my first time. Um, but to be out there, you know, yelling Bible verses and yelling about sin and about hell and time's running out and having a sign and everything and it's one thing to hand one on one hand the gospel track to somebody it's another thing to have everybody's eyes on you you know so it takes courage it takes a lot of courage for the men and uh, the brethren in ministry that do those street witnessing it takes a lot of courage so grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all my love for you which is in Christ Jesus Get out there, serve the Lord with the life that you're living, be a living testimony, and be a verbal testimony. Get out there and get gospel tracting. Time's running out, brother, says Christ. We could go home any day now. And there's brethren that don't believe that, but they're going to have to answer for that if they don't repent and get back to believing that Jesus Christ can come back any day. They're going to be answering for it big time at the judgment seat of Christ. And they're going to miss out on a lot of rewards because they're not living every day as if Jesus Christ could come back. Get busy, brothers and sisters of Christ. Get busy. So once again, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. P.S. Postscript. If you've got some good testimonies about gospel tracting, put them in the, in the comment section, okay? I love to hear God, uh, testimonies, whether it's life testimonies, salvation testimonies, testimonies, gospel tracting, being uh, part of the ministry of reconciliation. Go ahead and put it down in the gospel in the in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. So I will see you in the next video.